Welcome to Go Get It. Today we are going to see some of the important algorithms that follows greedy approach. Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. But before we dig into the details of these algorithms, we should build the foundation of these algorithms. That is spanning tree. Now what is spanning tree? As the name says, spanning tree is a tree that contains all the vertices and some of the edges of a connected and undirected graph. In layman's language, it says that a tree that spans all the vertices of a connected and an undirected graph. Let's consider the tree shown here. There are certain basic properties of a spanning tree which we are going to see in no, no time. But before that, let's just see the different possible spanning trees of the given graph. You can notice that on the right hand side we have a tree like structure which is produced from the given graph. This is one of the possible spanning tree of, the, of this graph. Another possibility of the given graph, we can find out one more spanning tree which looks like something like this. And the last possibility is this way. As I said, it is the last possibility. That means maximum possible spanning tree from the given graph is derived from this formula. V raised to V minus 2. Now what is V here? As you know, V is nothing but the vertices of the given graph. So for example, if you notice here, we have three different vertices of this graph. So here V is equals to 3. So 3 raised to 3 minus 2 which gives 3 and we have three different spanning trees here. Now there are basic properties of spanning tree which we will see now. Consider we have a graph with set of vertices V and edge set E. Now let's see what, what is the first property of a spanning tree. A spanning tree must contain only V minus 1 edges. So as we sh shown here, we have a given graph say with 3 vertices and 3 edges. So a spanning tree can have only V minus 1 edges. That means 3 minus 1, 2. So you can notice here that every spanning tree is having only 2 edges. Next property says that remove only E minus V plus 1 edges. So to make a spanning tree from the graph, we should remove only E minus V plus 1 edges. Now let's see an example here. Consider the graph with 4 vertices and 6 edges. So here E is equals to 6 and V is equals to 4. So to make a uh, valid spanning tree from this given graph if we follow the given formula here e minus v plus 1 so we have e is equals to 6 minus v which is 4 so 6 minus 4 gives us 2 and plus 1 3 so if we remove total 3 edges from the given graph we will get the respective spanning tree now let's see we will remove 3 different edges from the given graph and that's it we got a spanning tree. It also follows the V minus 1 edges. You can notice here that it contains only 3 edges and the number of vertices are 4. So 4 minus 1, 3 edges. Now let's consider the another property. What it says? Okay, it says a spanning tree should be maximally a cyclic. Now what does this mean? This means that by adding uh, another edge, a single edge to the spanning tree, it will give, give you a cyclic structure or a graph. Now what does this mean? That means I am adding, you can notice here, I am adding a extra edge into the spanning tree and it gives me a simple graph with four edges, four vertices. It is also cyclic in structure. So maximally a cyclic. Next property says that minimally connected. Now what does this mean? So let's say we have the spanning tree with three edges and four vertices. So minimally connected says that if we remove a edge, an edge from the graph or from the spanning tree, then 
it will give us two it will give us uh, more than one different components or it won't be any more in a connected form so we remove only one edge from the panning tree and we are getting two different components which are disconnected and finally the important property which we shown earlier also is the number of maximum possible spanning tree from the given graph is v raised to v minus 2 so we are done with the spanning trees now let's span into the algorithm so to start with we have kruskal's algorithm this algorithm is used to determine the minimum cost spanning tree now the question arises what is minimum cost spanning tree consider the given graph here you can notice here that every edge is associated with certain numbers say 10 25 24 so what are these numbers signify these numbers are nothing but the weights associated with the path between this age and this age so these are nothing but the cost or the weights you can say associated with each and every age between the two nodes now this minimum cost spanning tree plays a vital role in computer networks you can notice you can uh, imagine this complete structure or complete graph as a computer network with different set of routers and these are the connections or the connectivity between different routers so what kruskal's algorithm gives us it gives us a minimum cost spanning tree that means to travel a packet of uh, any data from one router to another router or say this is this is a, let's say a, let's use a marker here so if i make use this as a source of the uh, network and this as destination then what kruskal's algorithm gives us it gives us a minimum cost spanning tree that means to travel the packet from this source to this destination what will be the minimum cost required to travel so this kruskal's algorithm gives us that structure so our main goal here is to determine the spanning tree from the given graph using kruskal's algorithm now let's see how kruskal's algorithm proceeds in kruskal's algorithm what happens is it will generate the spanning tree in increasing order of the given weights or the cost associated with each edge so to start with you can notice here out of the given um, all the weights here 10 is the least so we'll start with the edge which contains the least cost so we have this structure as of now now next in the graph we have 12 so we'll include 12 into the spanning tree or the two uh, to be developed spanning tree next we can notice here we have 14 here so we'll include 14 so you, you you can notice here that in the increasing order we are arranging all the cost associated with the edges next is 16 we'll include 16 next is 22 now next comes 24 so you can notice here that it violates the basic property of a spanning tree you can notice here inclusion of this 24 edge or 24 cost edge it creates or it gives us a cycle or a graph like structure which is against the spanning trees property so this is absolutely wrong we should not include such edges in the uh, development of spanning tree so after 24 we have 25 so we'll include 25 cost after that we have 28 no 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 after if we include 28 again it is gonna create a cycle or a graph like structure so we cannot include 28 here so we are done here we have completed the spanning tree i guess now let's compare it with the spanning trees basic properties So, what are the basic properties of a spanning tree? We have V minus 1 edges. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, we have 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स एंड सेवन तो सेवन टोटल वर्टिस वी हैव सो आउट ऑफ सेवन वर्टिस वी शुड हैव ओनली सिक्स एजेस सो वन टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव एंड सिक्स वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स सो सिक्स एजेस वी हैव प्रोड्यूस विच सेटिसफाइज द बेसिक फर्स्ट बेसिक प्रॉपर्टी दैन इट्स इज रिमूव ई माइनस वी प्लस वन एजेस so again you can cross verify here with the uh, rest of the properties here maximally acyclic which we have seen just now and minimally connected and v raised to v minus 2 possibilities that you can calculate later on time also so i hope this has cleared the kruskal's algorithm and now you can calculate the or you can develop the minimum cost panel tree so minimum cost means here nothing but 10 plus 25 plus 22, 14, 16 plus 12. So addition of all these rates give you the cost required to travel the travel of the packet from this node to the destination node. So this is how Kruskal's algorithm works. Now let's jump into the Prim's algorithm, which is again a variety of greedy approach, and which is again useful to determine the minimum cost spanning tree. this is an alternative to determine the minimum cost spanning tree we'll consider the same kind same example with same set of edges and weights again here our goal is to calculate the minimum cost spanning tree but the approach is entirely different here here we'll suppose this let's use the marker we'll consider this as the starting point or the starting node so we have make use of this as a starting node so we'll include the least weight edge uh, least weight associated with the edge so we have here two different options 10 and 28 so we'll include only 10 here now you can notice here we have different starting node now again we'll apply the same algorithm here but we can see that we have only one edge coming out of this node the starting node so we'll include that edge here with a weight 25 now again the starting node is going to change and we'll include 22 because 22 is less than 24 so we cannot include 24 here we'll include 22 now our starting node or our target node is changing and will include 14 because 18 is greater than 14 so will include 14 here again change of node we can notice only one edge is associated with the starting node here so will include 16 as again change of uh, target node or the starting node so here also again you can notice here that 28 and 12 are going on so will take 12 as per the algorithm include 12 in the developing structure change the node and we have this as a structure again now you can see here we have 24 and 18 are the two different edges coming out of this node so we'll include 18 here oh no you can notice here that inclusion of 18 leads to a graph like structure or a cyclic structure which is again against the spanning trees basic property so we cannot include 18 here we'll remove 18 now we'll try with 24 so what is happening here again the same case if we include 24 it will it will again gives you a graph like or a cyclic structure so we cannot include 24 so you can notice here we are getting the same uh, spanning tree which we got last time you can see here so this is how prim's algorithm works i hope this video has made you clear all the uh, concepts of prim's algorithm and kruskal's algorithm and to be very frank the spanning tree which is very basic fundamental of uh, um, these algorithms thanks for listening keep watching